you're all set. Have a great meeting. Thanks, Thank you, uh, Athena. Athena, I'm sorry. I'm going to uh, call to order this special meeting of governance organization and legislation. It's June 24th. It's 10.32, it looks like, on my clock. Um, and pursuant to Governor Baker's March 12th order, suspending certain provisions of open meeting law, this meeting of GOL is being conducted via remote participation. Um, because this is a special meeting, um, there is no uh, provision for, pub for comment, public comment. So that will actually not be part of the agenda. So looking on the agenda, it's actually listed. <laughs> Who's the chair of this? Uh, we'll talk to him later. Okay. Um, but as a special meeting, according to our rules of procedure, we actually do not have public comment. <clears throat> and I will- Let me correct that. that. We do not have to have public comment. We do not have to have, thank you. Um, so I will have a discussion with the chair later about the agenda. Um, we are, our focus today is exclusively on the town manager evaluation process and on the forms. And I'm going to hand over the meeting to uh, Lynn and have her take us through the documents, which are all in your uh, GOL folder on SharePoint. Should and we confirm everyone can hear and be heard? Uh, okay, we can do that. Um, let's start with Mandy. I'm here. Okay, Andy. I'm here too. All right, great. Lynn? Here. All right, and Pat? Here. All right, I can hear and see everybody. And uh, so Lynn, I'm has passing it off to you. All right, so first of all, I sent in an email yesterday all of the most up-to-date documents because I didn't know how to create a previous document portion in the folder. I'm sure Angela can help me do that. Um, and the reason uh, that we want to look at the up-to-date ones is because I've started to make changes and uh, things like that. So let me just say, we will come back to the timeline, but there's no sense looking at the timeline until after we go through the various documents. And, but however, on the timeline where you'll see that I said note one, note two, note three, and note four. Note four. So note one is all about the town councilors portion of the evaluation. Note two is all about the staff portion. Note three is all about the committee chairs, commissions, and committee members. And note four is the public. And uh, later on, which we're not going to try to deal with now, is note five, which is the manager self-evaluation. Clearly, he writes that. Note six will be um, the the contract, and I have a copy of the most recent one. And note seven, which is all the way on the second page, is the draft goals, uh, which I would advise that we start working on now, and maybe one counselor might want to take major responsibility for that. I'm willing to do it, but if somebody else is just dying to do this, I'm more than glad to have them do that. And then um, note eight is actually the draft memo. So what I've tried to do is use the previous process. There's a couple places where I'm suggesting some changes this year, but in going through this, I will tell you, it is really time we relook at this whole process because for example, when we get to the issue of the staff survey, we have been using the identical staff survey now for probably at least eight or nine years and have not revised it. I'm assuming it's kind of a canned survey that came from someplace and I have not taken the time to try to go and find a new one. Um, so let me, with, unless you have questions about the timeline and the, the place, how I'm trying to relate the notes to the timeline, uh, I'm gonna go on and we'll start with the manager evaluation. Okay. So I wrote a note on this, I'll pull it up. Um,
as soon as I can get my screen to cooperate. Oh, shoot. Okay. Can you see? Oh, that's not what I want right now. Sorry. Um, so, as you might recall from... Can you see the screen, the town manager evaluation 2019? Yes. Mm -hmm. Okay. So as you might recall from the previous um, work of the council, this, oh, this is mislabeled. I'm sorry. Damn. All right, this, this should be 2020. Right. Right. Um, so in last year, when we did this, we would take each one of these small areas and we would have a rating scale. And this year, when the group that did the goals met, we purposely have seven big goals. And we said, this year, we don't have to rate each one. Instead, what we're suggesting is that at the end of each section, the person, the counselor, write comments using as a guide the subcategories and then up on the top they actually rate for that particular um, area of responsibility. Now this can be done either going back and using SurveyMonkey which allows for a uh, un there's no limit on the number of characters in the comment and it would automatically compile the um, totals and it would automatically compile all of the comments, but it also allows you to show individual counselor um, evaluations be published on the website. The difference here is, and, and it, by the way, this could also be done as a Word document and it just means that whoever is going to do the write-up has to compile, you know, all of the ratings in here and come up with an average. That, that's only seven calculations. And so if people feel, first of all, that this is a better way to go, and second of all, that um, people would prefer it to be in a Word document, I think that's perfectly fine. I did spend some time with a survey research person um, former colleague, uh, to look at the various options. And for what we're trying to do, SurveyMonkey is the best. We don't have a license for Qualtrics. And uh, the other option is Google. And a lot of people do not trust Google. They feel like it can be uh, basically isn't secure. So our, our choices, first and foremost, is, is this format acceptable? And second is, do we want this survey to be done in SurveyMonkey, or do we want it to be done as a Word document? Okay, so those, as I see it, are the two choices with regard to this. The other issues I raised, um, and is also at the very end of the survey, there's another room for general comment as well, so that you can get done with the whole thing uh, I did not add an overall rating, but if you would like, I could add an overall rating as well. So, hold on. Yeah. So let me just go back over this. This is the 2020. It would only ask for seven ratings. They would look like this. It asks everybody to write comments. And then you go to the next item, you do a rating, and you do your comments. Mm -hmm. And you continue on like that to the very end, where you do your last set of ratings. 
and your comments, and then you have an additional comment section. Okay. Now, I will tell you there are a couple councils, not, not many to be honest, that have said they would prefer to rate on each individual little item. Um, and so I think we need to decide as GOL how you want this to go forward to the council. Mandy Jo, you have your Mandy, hand. Yeah. Yeah, um, I like the idea of an overall rating. Um, so I, I, I hadn't thought about that, but I think I would add that in. Um, another general comment is given this weird year, um, I wonder if we, I, I think I would like to see in addition to the additional comments section, um, a section on comments related to the handling of the international pandemic, you know, the pandemic, COVID-19. Um, mm -hmm. Since that essentially <clears throat> consumed four months of the year, one third of the year, um, and he only had these goals since December, um, so it actually consumed about half of the period in which these goals were present. Yeah. Um, in terms of rating just the big one, I think for some of these big categories that works, um, but for others, I think it's really hard to give a one all rating and and you know so if you look at like relationship to the town council, there are three things that he's supposed to be doing to meet the goals, three goals, so giving an overall rating with three individual goals doesn't seem like it's overly onerous um, and wouldn't give him information, but when you look at goal number one, um, the economic goal, there are three sub goals and within those sub goals each sub goal has two or three sub sub goals and one of those sub goals has like multiple additional sub goals so that you know there's there's a whole lot of goals in there some of which in reading through weren't met probably um and so if you were being honest you'd be writing probably an unsatisfactory for some of these um and for others they were easily met um and so I'm not sure an overall rating on strong fiscal management as a whole gives Paul, would give Paul and provide Paul with any real help mm -hmm. in figuring out where he was strong and where the council thought he was weak. Um, I mean, the comments would, but I'm not sure if I'm looking through goals in number one and some of them you know, some of the sub goals are commendable, some are satisfactory, some are needs improvement, some are unsatisfactory. I'm not sure how I rate an mm -hmm. overall um, rating on that. So I was thinking maybe there's a compromise of maybe we do all the big goals and overall rating, but also every letter goal, not any numbers. So like goal one would have four ratings maybe an a b c you know a rating on goal a maintain and strengthen strategies for long-term fiscal health and rating on b determine financially sustainable strategies and the rating on c administering the annual budget and then an overall strong fiscal management rating and maybe we could do that for each of the seven goals it would increase the number of ratings by about you know four to five times because there's somewhere between three and five goals. Okay, so there's three in the, there's three in number one. And in then some of them have five. five. In number three, there's one, two, three, four, five. Five, five's the most, four has five. Five, this one has three. Oh, six, economic development has three. six, I guess. And yep. number seven has three. So it would add to the number of ratings, but I think it would provide better information to the manager without overly burdening the counselors to try and rate every single thing. Mm. Uh huh. Okay. Andy? Uh, so I was trying to think of uh, the uh, point that was. Uh, uh, brought up about what was the effect of the uh, pandemic on his uh, and how he handled it. There's also, we need to find some way to recognize that the pandemic affected 
his ability to um, achieve some of the other goals in part just because of time, his time and staff time to support it. And right. uh, but we need to make sure that we give a balanced uh, inquiry in that area. Uh, but I agree that an inquiry into the, uh, bringing that topic up makes sense. Um, I, Just as an aside, I didn't bring up the introductory uh, email, but I believe I mentioned it in the email. And when we go back, we should look at that. But go ahead. Okay. And I guess the other thing is, uh, Lynn's had now had the experience for one year of putting this together. I always uh, felt that there was two burdens with the number of checkoff boxes in the number of separate comment sections that were on those forms. And part of it was all of the counselors or select board members who were filling it out in the past. Um, and the other was the uh, person who was in the role as uh, chair or president to um, kind of combine it all. And uh, I recognized uh, as soon as that came up that going from five select board members to 13 counselors was, is in and of itself creating a crisis that was making a horrible task into an impossible task. Uh, so Lynn, you have to give your honest guidance from being the only one who's been in that role as to whether you think the expansion that Mandy recommended is going to interfere with the um, desire that you have to make this manageable for that um, so let me answer that in two ways. And this is referring to the past in a way that it assures you that I did not break open meeting law. I, as president or as a counselor who was in charge of this, had the option of asking another counselor to help. And I did. Okay. Um, the second thing is, I actually like the sub ratings as someone writing this up. I frankly think it's easier to have ratings. Uh, I, I like having fewer. And I think the way Mandy Joes proposed it actually is not only doable, I agree that it gives Paul more options, but I also think it gives counselors more options of how they can give feedback. Okay, oh, that's fine. I'm, I like that idea. Me too. Pat, was that you? Yes, it was a me too. Okay, I didn't see hands because I don't have- Oh, I'm sorry, I didn't do that. No, it, I didn't see it anyway, so don't worry. Okay, uh, yeah, it's your fault. <laughs> I think it's a really good compromise of uh, not having them all. I mean, think about this area with all of them being ratings. And by the way, when the group got done with these last year, we looked at this and said, well, we certainly didn't achieve, achieve brevity. Um, but nevertheless, George, you have your hand up. Um, just wondering also about the COVID-19, whether that should be added as a something that needs a rating or is it something that um, I guess first, should it be added? And secondly, does it then get a rating and then comments um, on the form? Or is it simply something that we're being encouraged to keep in the back of our, obviously all of us will be very much in the front of our minds as we fill out this evaluation that so much of what Paul has been asked to do and is being evaluated on has been you know, seriously hindered uh, to say the least. By, by this crisis. So that's something all of us will be thinking about when we write our comments. Do we want a separate item here? Um, sounds like the answer is yes, but I'm asking. Um, that would require a rating and then potential comments on that specific topic. Okay, um, there's two people with hands up. Uh, Pat? Can you unmute and talk? 
Maybe I should just left, leave it unmuted. Um, okay. I like the uh, op I would like the opportunity to make comments related to how he's been handling the pandemic crisis. I don't want to rate him on that. I I, right. I want to do ratings individual. You know, um, uh, I support what Mandy is saying about overall rating, but individual ratings of the subcategories. But I really, it feels very odd to me to rate him on his handling of the crisis. Mm -hmm. um, it just makes me uncomfortable. I don't even know if I could articulate a reason. Mm -hmm. Joe? Yeah, um, I think there's two issues here. Uh, talking about our understanding of how and what we think he's done with the crisis itself. Um, I agree. I'm not sure we have the ability to rate on whether it's been great or not, but I think commenting on it would be fantastic um, since it's been such a major part of what he's had to transition to. Um, but the second area is how that transition and having to deal with all of that unexpected crisis um, that, that continues for so long, you know, months, not a week, um, has affected his ability to meet the actual oh, goals we cool. set. And so that, I don't think that issue belongs in rating his response to the crisis or yeah. responding to the crisis. I think that belongs in each of the comment areas for each of the goals. And so maybe when we add the words, you know, comment or additional comment at the end of each of these on that, um, include something like, you know, including your assessment as to how it, COVID has affected the ability to meet these goals or something like that. I don't know what the wording would be, but, but specifically mm -hmm. indicate in each of those comment periods, yeah, talk about whether you think his inability or ability to actually meet some of these was affected by having to deal with this crisis type thing. Hmm. Okay, so something like that with each comment. So let me just give you an example, but and again, I think this is very reasonable. Under here, identify additional sources of revenue. Well, you know, that got seriously turned upside down, but he applied for all kinds of other stuff. So, okay. Are there other comments about this? So this is what I've heard. Under each comment, individual comment, oh, under each category, provide a rating for the capital letters. A, B, C, D, whatever, okay? Keeping the rating overall. Second, under each comment, add something to the comments section that basically states, including how this was affected, how the ability to achieve this was affected by COVID, okay? Then I've heard that at the end of this, not only do we have, oh, we have an overall rating, we have additional comments, and then we add comments related to his handling of the international COVID-19 pan pandemic, not a rating. Does questions, comments, did I get that? Did I hear that one right? Yes? Huh. I mean, that works for me. Do, yeah. do we know whether the council expects us to vote on this before they all go out, bring it back? That's a very good question. I, I mean, we have a meeting on Monday. Uh, I can quickly review, or George can 
you know, give out a report from GOL and we can take it from there. Um, let me stop sharing this and share with you um, a different document. This is where I wrote notes to you about the ratings and so forth. But more importantly, uh, this is the message that I revised and making a point that the, we didn't adopt the goals until this date. And then I did make a note about the COVID pandemic, but I should probably add that we specifically ask at the end, you rate this. So just to be clear, you're proposing to rate something that was not stated in the performance goals that he was. Right. So it's add an overall rating. No, and make additional comment for COVID. So we're not rating for COVID. Is that what you meant, Andy? I just was tr trying to picture the question coming up as to you have town manager performance goals that didn't anticipate what the uh, goals would have to be if we had a pandemic. Because who would have ever thought to put that into a performance goal. So we want to recognize it, uh, that it's not part of the performance goals. Okay, something like that in there. I, I wrote a note to myself, which I don't know if you can, can you see that? Now we can. Okay. Just a clarification from me, if I can. When we say overall ratings, I, I just, my memory is not good today, I guess. We're, we're talking about providing a rating for his performance overall, or are we talking yes. about, I'm sorry, yes. yeah. So in addition to rating him in all these various categories and subcategories, we're also going to be asked to provide a rating for his performance overall. Yep. And I, I guess I would like to hear some argument, further discussion as to why we think that's necessary. To be honest with you, I. Uh, I think it's a hard one to do. I, mean, I can understand rating someone on specific things and even subcategories of things um, and then leave it at that. Um, I'm not sure what value there is in um, providing an overall performance rating, um, given that you've gone through, you know, I mean, from the point of view of Paul's benefit to Paul is to have, as I think Mandy made a point very well, that we want this to be useful to him. Um, so I'm not sure what this kind of rating really does for him, um, as opposed to specific things that he can look at and go, okay, you know, that looked like it went well, or that looks like it needs work, or that really didn't work well. Um, at least it gives him some 
something to work with. But an overall rating seems to me, I'm just trying to understand why, what's the point? I mean, it won't take much time, um, but it just adds to the burden of the counselor and maybe they feel they have to justify it, but they've already provided all kinds of comments and ratings above. Um, so help me understand why we think this is valuable both for Paul and for, maybe it's for the public, I don't know. Maybe it's for well, the let me just point out that depending on how that one comes out, that will be the headline. The right. I mean, of it. <laughs> yeah, huh? If we don't have it, then, you know, they can make up whatever. Right. I, I just, yeah. Right. George has convinced me to get rid of yeah. it, even though I said it sounded good. <laughs> well, I just wondering, I, I don't, yeah. Um, I don't think it's going to be very helpful to Paul, but maybe there's a place for it in terms of the, the optics. I don't know. Um, the press, I don't know. But and the course, optics, I guess, are the letter. I know. Town yeah, manager overall evaluation be. headline. He gets a blank. C but, minus, B plus. It's stupid. Right. I yeah. He's, he either gets commendable, satisfactory, needs improvement, and by the time you get done, you're going to say we had five counselors that said this, three that said this, no, no. five that said this. I I'm agreeing with you, George. I just yeah. I mean. So I just took it out of the other uh, place. I just said, we'll do comments, then additional comments, which will be a summary of additional areas not identified, and then comments related to the handling of the international COVID pandemic. You could even combine those last two if you wanted. Again, it's a decision for the group, but um, True. again, I'm trying to keep this as simple as we can, given the complexities you could combine those last two into a single, you know, comment, extra comment area where you just say, and, and keep, you know, and including, you know, handling of COVID-19. But maybe people want a special thing just for that. If that, that's fine. But, um, you know, I'm worried also about town councilor burnout. I mean, just as you make your way through this, you know. And I will tell you from last year, and you can see this yourself, some people wrote, Ages, right? Other people hardly wrote a thing, right? And, and the problem that that leaves you with, by the way, yeah. is then the only written stuff you have is the person who wrote pages, right? right. And so it leaves it to the person writing the overall evaluation to come up with a balanced way of talking about what all of the counselors have done for the ratings, the little bit that some most counselors have said, and then putting in some of the highlights of what a counselor who was much more lengthy in their comments have done. And we had that situation last year. I'm hopeful that lessening the number of ratings encourages people to write more. Mm. Um, because we rated so much yeah. it's almost like well i just gave all the ratings what can i add whereas mm -hmm. if you're lessening how many you're rating you have more to add potentially which is the one downside of putting in the ratings for each numbered each letter each major letter because more sections you do the more you feel blood out before you would stab by the comma. Yeah. So we can encourage them to please add some written comments. Okay, anything else on this? Because I want to make sure we get through all four of them. Mm -hmm. Okay? Right. So yes. I'm going to stop sharing here. And now we're going to go to the next one. And this is the staff. And the staff, um, this is an area, and I just want to be very, very clear. This is an area that Angela, Brianna, Athena, um, Joanne in HR, and Evelyn, uh, I've met with that group twice, and they have made various comments much of which is summarized here. And then Angela put into a OneDrive 
all of the evaluation material grouped by years. And uh, am I sharing the screen? No. Not at the moment. No. I'm sorry. Um, Angela put all of the um, evaluations grouped by year. And yesterday when I was getting this stuff together and in final form to give you, I went back to see whether or not I was actually looking to see if I could find a Word document of the staff evaluation. And what I found is going back all the way to 2014 or 13, we've been using the same staff evaluation form. The big issue is, and I have now posed this to Paul, and he has asked Evelyn to look into it. And it's, it's the following comment. Which I have to go and show. It's under tracking, but I believe. Thank you. So I want to there, show the markups. No, so under simple markup, there's a box, that one. No, the, yep. So right here, it says, please, please be aware that these submissions will be, and it didn't say summarized. It said, be made available to every town council member and town manager. In other words, we assure you anonymity, but by the way, we plan to share it with everybody with your name on it or individually. Staff are very reluctant. So the question I have asked Paul and he has since asked Evelyn is, is there any requirement legally that we have to show individual or can we just summarize and share only the summary? And this is not only true for this, but it's for chair comments as well as public comments. Um, I, if I saw this as a staff person and I wanted to be critical, I would be reluctant. I mean, I liked the change. The question is, can we make this change? That's the question. And I'm waiting for an answer from Evelyn now. And, but can any of you, Andy, can you think of a reason why it was this way? You're, you need to unmute. Yeah, somebody, because uh, Al just came in, I had shut it down for a minute. Uh, in the select board days, we did not um, require names beyond as matter um, on the submission from staff so that the staff was coming in um, essentially as anonymous as people could make it out to be. And for the most part, it, um, you couldn't figure out who the staff were. And uh, you also guessed what departments they were. So that's another alternative to ask is why are we putting the uh, should we have the name not be required to be included? And um, does that invite uh, invalid comments or people trying to make a score a point? You're saying don't include them. Well, it's an alternative. I think that one of the issues that had come up in prior years was if a union is in the midst of negotiating and is unhappy with how negotiations were going, would the members of that uh, bargaining unit use the evaluation as an opportunity to score points or whatever? Uh, uh, the questionnaire itself as drafted does not even have a space for a name. Right. Um, so, you know, but, but again, I, I hear Lynn's point, even if there's no name, depending on what you write, it could be at least traceable back to a department. Yeah. Um, you know, I just remember that from last year and reading them, many identified at least the department they were in, um, just by, or you could guess. So, you know, Angela, I really want you to chime in here if you have comments. 
I mean, the discussion has been great. Okay. <laughs> uh, and Mandy Jo, I, unless there's a requirement for names and departments, I don't think we should include them. And I don't think we should be, I mean, we're not going to take the individual comments and make a summary of them. We're going to just show counselors all comments. They just won't be attributable to an individual survey. So what SurveyMonkey will print out for this is the ratings for all of the questions, which I'll show you in a moment, and all of the comments. It just won't have the survey and that person's comments. And what is, we're also saying is eliminate the department and eliminate the name. Is the staff going to do a survey monkey survey? Because all we have is a PDF is, and they had an email and we were going to provide them with paper copies and all. And if they're not, if they're all submitting on paper last year, I think we got scans of the paper that we then turned back in. Um, is we someone did. going to be typing everything into survey monkey? All right, so this, brings us to, <laughs> so this brings us to the next question, okay? And, and another, another suggestion was made is that we give people both a cover letter and a form. Don't put it in an envelope, and, but give them a return envelope, and they can put it, and it, it, you know, it's addressed to town hall and they can put it in town hall mail that circulates across among all the buildings. We've also had it suggested that we find a external person to which they can send their response. And I have now identified a woman who works independently. I have worked with her in the past and she is very good at these kinds of things. So what we're trying, the overall issue is, and I'm just going to say, we may be chasing a rainbow here. I don't even know if we want to call it a rainbow. No matter what people have done in the past, the highest response from staff I've ever seen is low 40s. Last year, we had 30 or 31. So over all of the years that we have data for, it doesn't matter what we've done. So... If we send these to someone who isn't even a town employee, I assume we would be technically contracting with that person and paying that person to right. do this. Because if we're not doing that, we've got huge personnel. I mean, they're personnel records. Um, why, why can't we use HR for this? Isn't that the purpose of HR? We mm -hmm. can use HR. In the past, uh, last year at least, Angela did it. She, she, we got the individual responses that people put in the computer. I think there were like 19 or 20 of them. And then we got the paper responses and Angela added the paper responses into the summary so that the summary reflected all 30 returns. We could ask Joanne in HR. I just want to mention as of Friday, we're down one person in HR because Evelyn's last day is Friday. And I, Angela, will people trust HR not to reveal it? I don't, I don't really have a handle on that. I really don't. Um, we did give people the option to do it electronically last year. I know I filled mine out electronically and we do send multiple reminders of the deadline when the deadline approaches. I know in our discussion, Lynn, we talked about incentivizing somehow, like offering, you know, some type of reward for participating, but. You know, $5, $5 yeah. certificate was the idea. Right. So I don't, and we did make on the sign in level last year by Survey Monkey, we did make it optional to put your name and your department on the you say about 10 people did and 10 people didn't right right and we did have one person who wrote a long a, you know a, a page long evaluation and sent it to me directly and i want to go back to andy's point oftentimes what you get is people who are annoyed 
over contractual issues. This year, the issue that's annoying people is being made to come back to work in the building, even right. though huge accommodations are being made. Right. Um, so I can tell you right now, we're gonna get some of that. Um, and the, so it's in that category. Pat, you have your hand up. Yeah, I'm a little uncomfortable with that, um, uh, both from you and Andy, because in a way you're saying, oh, if it's a contractual issue and, and they want to get a pay raise, their comments aren't valid. Um, or they're going to, th I think we have to assume all comments are valid because it's very easy to eliminate the things that you don't want to hear or you don't want to know about. And so uh, setting yourself up to disbelieve people's responses makes me uncomfortable. I don't want to speak for Andy, but I will tell you that's not my concern. My concern is that it skews the survey. <laughs> Yeah. Here's the problem. We have over, what, 300 employees that get this, Angela? Yes. Okay. And if you're never going to get a good sample, you're never going to get a representative response. What you're going to get is individual responses and whatever you get is not valid. <laughs> I'm telling you this from a survey research background. Then why do it? So it, it, I think, I think the issue is from Lynn's perspective, it's not statistically valid. That's right. But it, I understand that. But it is still valid to right. say that it's not valid in general. I think is what Pat's issue is. I'm saying it's statistically those complaints valid. and those writings are completely valid because that's what our employees are experiencing. Right. right. Um, but but right. Thank you we for can't your use that as a statistical sample and a statistical rating, if that makes sense. You right. know, if I'm annoyed at Paul the day I write my, for something that he says or does, uh, the day that I write the evaluation, it's going to affect what I, I write. That, I think that's true no matter what. So, um, I don't know. All right, I'm being cranky. Ignore me. So, I, I guess no, I would prefer. Yeah. Oh, go, George. I think we also have to keep your hand up, George. Yeah, it's just, yeah, please. Um, that um, this is about us making a decision or in other words we let's not discount the role of the individual counselors and hopefully their ability to use be thoughtful and use common sense um i agree with mandy you know statistically i'm not worried about statistics so much but i do like hearing what people are saying both good and bad i'm thinking in my own experience as a teacher you know when you get you know when you have to uh, evaluations are done the chair looks at the evaluations and a good chair is someone who's able, a thoughtful chair is someone able to make the kinds of distinctions that I assume my fellow counselors will make. You know, that person was having a bad day. I mean, you're looking for patterns, you're looking for things that stand out. Um, and we're all, or hopefully would be aware of contracts, larger issues that, that color things. We can't control the content, Pat's right. We're not trying to control the content, I don't think. Um, we just trying to get as much of a response as we can to get a feel for how people, what morale is like and what, what are some of the issues that have been coming up. Um, so I, I want to hear from as many voices as possible. I'm not worried about, you know, whether, you know, the union is going to use it as a way to blah, blah, blah. We're smart enough to be able to hopefully figure that out. But um, the question is, how can we encourage more people to do it? And it may be it's just be there's just a natural limit here. I, it's, there's just only so much you can do, um, and make it as easy as possible. Encourage people to do it, and then trust the counselors um, to to use good judgment. Um, but I, I, I'm with Pat. I I want to I just want to hear what people have to say, and then I can read it and go, well, there's somebody who clearly has an axe to grind, or I can read it and go, hmm, I hadn't thought of that, um, and that might cause me to ask some questions. But that's our job, right? Mm -hmm. So 
here's the questions I'm hearing, not whether we do a staff survey, we do. Whether we do this staff survey, for us to come up with a different staff survey at this point, I think it's a little too late. But I do think we should look for one for the future. Um, the two questions, or some questions are, do we even provide an option to include their name and department? That's one. Yeah. And do we provide individual responses to counselors and Paul, or do we provide a summary literally of all responses? And again, one of the goals is to try to increase staff comfortableness with responding. Mandy Jo, you had your hand up first. Um, yeah, so, um... I think a summary, although I don't know what summary means, right? If the summary is printing out the survey monkey thing in sort of summary form instead of individual response form, fine. Um, if the summary is someone going in and doing essentially what the president of the council has done in the past to summarize the whole evaluation, I'd be concerned with that because mm -hmm. that will we we as counselors won't have any means of determining what bias went into creating that summary or not um so there's that um i have a one small change for the letter itself okay um, can we come back to that in a moment yeah uh, i just thought I i'd stay mention on that before this we move on yeah, I want to stay on this and see if there's... I, I am uncomfortable having this in this short period of time go out to an independent non-staff member. Whether okay. that whether we send it to HR or to someone else, I don't know what's best, but I'd rather keep it in-house at this time. Okay. Um, and other comments on whether we should provide a printout of all responses, but in summary form. So in other words, question one, 20 people responded this way, 50 people responded this way. And here are all of the comments shown by individual paragraphs from participants. Nobody writes any summary. It's just given to counselors as a printout of all responses. That's what I'm hearing. George? Strongly my position, um, unless I hear some good argument against it, that you ask people for their comments and then you take their comments and summarize them. I mean, let's just, there shouldn't be summaries. It's, all, it's extra work, first of all, but secondly, let people speak for themselves and trust counselors to use their judgment. Um, it's not extra work if they use SurveyMonkey. Okay. And if the person in HR then enters those responses we received by paper, it's extra work for them, but that's it. I'd also like to allow the option of giving your name and your department. I, I don't see any reason why someone shouldn't be allowed to do that if they want. Um, so I guess those are my two thoughts. There are there other options. comments on name and department? Yeah. Unless people are afraid to somehow it, that, that, yeah. If we're only distributing in a summary form, and I wouldn't use the word summarized because it's not a summarized okay. thing, um, but it's a summary form, I think, um, or so a congregated there, form or yeah. something, okay. um, then I don't see as much of a benefit to having a name in a department. And so... I don't think it's necessary. You get you get to know the names and the departments in aggregate then, but um, you can't pin one comment to any department. And so I think the benefit of having the names is outweighed by the concern people have of it even being asked. Any other comments on this? The only thing, only thing by having department is to see whether or not all departments were represented somehow. But again, since this is not a representative sample, right. it really makes no difference. Right. Right. Names? Other comments in this? 
So we're saying, do not do this. Right? Right. Okay, we're saying print out all responses in aggregate form. Okay. No, I know what that means. I'm trying, I don't know if I've said it appropriately. No, I think aggregate form is the better way to do it, and we'd change the letter to it because I think it it gets across what we're going for. That they're gonna be there word for word, but it's gonna be aggregated. It's not going okay. to be okay. yeah. Do not okay. use a um, outside evaluator, that's fine. Uh, return envelope, it doesn't need a stamp if it's being done by HR. So the report that com came out of SurveyMonkey last year gives each question and in the aggregate summary, it gives um, the average response in terms of the affective scale response. And then it shows you each individual response as a bar graph. Mm -hmm. And then beneath that, it gives you all of the comments that were entered. Mm -hmm. Okay. In their entirety. Good. I don't see how we're going to be able to revise this, but I do want to ask, do we want them to include in their responses consideration for COVID? I'd like to see it there. It's been it such a major part of the year, I think we should ask. So include in comments. Okay. Yeah. Handling and with, I'm looking for people to help with wordsmithing here. Okay. We don't have to do that right now. But. Uh, what do you think about the idea of having a video where I'm personally asking people to fill it in? That was a suggestion from actually Evelyn. I like the idea. Okay. Was that you, Mandy Jo? That was me, Pat. Thank you. I didn't know <laughs> if it was you or Angela. You're kind of dark today. <laughs> um, just and then the other thing, and I want to just go to the letter, uh, is to look at stating the goals and then a link to the website where the full set are and assure people that it's confidential. So right here is the actual letter. Hi, Sash. <laughs> Somebody just woke up. Um, okay, so... Um, so this is the revised email and printed letter for staff it would be on letterhead, date it appropriately. Mandy Jo, you said you had a change here. Yeah, I just had a change to the bottom paragraph that starts, we ask that you return your form by 4 p.m. Friday, July 10th. The way it's worded with the 2020 and should be mailed inter uh, it, it it because of the changes it the sentence doesn't work so i would split it into two sentences um so that you know it ends by friday 4 p.m friday july 10th 2020 period please send it by mail inter office mail or deliver to the town council in the envelope provided for that purpose period i think it just makes it cleaner And I think with our change in wording to aggregate the fourth paragraph, please be aware that these submissions will be summarized and that summary be will, needs to be changed. Because they're not going to be summarized. They will be aggregated. And made available. And made available. Another word is compiled if you. Mm, yeah. Might be at more, yeah. Aggregated or compiled, which one? I think compiled. Um, just, I mean, we all know what aggregated means, but compiled, I just. Okay. Okay. 
And what about this thing? It, it, this basically, all this says is the aggregate what will not be provided. And this should say the aggregate response. The compiled. The compiled, thank you. Or the compilation of responses, whichever. Yeah, or the compiled responses, yeah. You need an S, just put an S in. Yeah, it's easier. <laughs> they become part, will become part, yeah. Right. Become probably right. two words there. <laughs> right. And then this is something that we have not done in the past. We actually listed the seven goals and we will have a reference here, which tells them where they can find the detail. Can I ask about that? The thinking yeah. behind that. Um, I, again, I, I'm sort of in favor of keeping things as short as possible. Um, I, there's a good reason I'm sure for this. I'm not sure it really is, I don't know. What's, what's the reason for it? Uh, to just be have people more aware of what we're looking at. That's what I think what we're interested in here is just, you know, really, I mean, I guess my thought is if people have complaints or gripes or whatever, I mean, good, bad, or indifferent, I just want to hear what they're thinking. I'm not really worried about whether they are in tune with all our great goals and all our great plans. I just want to get their sense of how they work with the town manager. Big, small, large, I don't care. So okay. I'm just the thought. Um, these goals are important to us as a town council. They're important to the town. Um, it'd be nice if everybody, you know, knew them by heart. Um, I wish I knew them by heart. Um, but from the point of view of just a, a staff member being asked to give us their input, my thought initially here is just keep it as simple as possible, which is what we've got. And I'm wondering why we want to add this. Uh, extra text for them to probably ignore, but even if they read it, um, what's the value added? Um, it's a question. I'm just wondering. I tend to agree with you. I think that it might actually confuse uh, uh, confuse it for the people who are trying to honestly respond. What we're really looking for is whether they feel that um, the town manager is giving them an opportunity to listen to their ideas, listen to their concerns, as in whether he's considering uh, those kinds of things, whether he's a responsive uh, manager to people who are doing the day-to-day -day work. And that's really what we're after. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm fine with that. So it needs grammatically some things picked up. If we got rid of the goals, then we should get rid of the whole paragraph that says below are the town council's broad right. performance goals. Um, there's some things here, but do we want to encourage online responses? That first paragraph is enclosed as a questionnaire for that purpose. Are helpful, add your comments to the back of the form. Um, all assuming paper forms, should we be encouraging in this letter electronic responses? Yes. Some people are afraid, even though it's not true, that a computer can be traced. No, I, I understand that, but we barely even talk about the fact that you can actually submit them electronically at all in this letter. There's, right. there's no indication really at all. Responses can be mailed by inner office mail or dropped off at the town council. Like there's no indication that you can even right. submit an electronic survey. So maybe we can say first up front, you can respond electronically or return. Yeah, I mean the electronic here is if you prefer to fill out the form on a computer, you've also received an email with that option. That, that to me wasn't even, you can fill out the form by a survey. That's like, oh, you can type your answers and print out the form and then mail it back to us. <laughs> um. Okay. And then here we just start by saying enclosed. 
I mean, we could even say we encourage you. I mean, again, it's a question yeah. of what we want to accomplish. We could say we encourage you to fill the form out on the computer. You received an email with that option. Um, you're also free to, and then you could just say, right. I mean, it's, do we want to encourage it? If we do, we should say it. And we should I put think it up. we want to. And then mm -hmm. if this is not your preferred option, we've enclosed a questionnaire for the purpose mm -hmm. of returning, you know, for non-electronic submissions or something. Agree. For compilation purposes, it'll be a lot easier. Yeah. So yeah, we'll need to wordsmith the rest of that. But yeah, this whole paragraph needs to be reworked. But I, I, I like the idea of encouraging them to use the electronic response system if they could. Do you think I should say it is in fact secure? Uh, no. If people have that head, that idea in their head, I don't know how you're going to get it out of it. So you know. In fact, you'll, you'll encourage it by saying it's not. Right, to think, oh, gee, maybe it's right. I mean, I just, I don't know what to make of that kind of thinking, you know. If they're really that paranoid, uh, yeah, I think we should just be straightforward. Please use, I, the, you know, we encourage yeah. you to do this. And, and here's the other option, enough. The only reason I would say, Lynn, not to do that is because if we get 200 responses this year, someone, and I'm, I'm not saying it would be me, but someone might go back and make sure that they're not all from the same person. Like no. Survey Monkey does have a way to track. Yeah. And okay. so if they're all from the same IP address, that could be telling, especially if we have a spike in numbers. Okay. Should we just let Lynn yeah. wordsmith this later? Yeah. 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 So we appreciate the desire okay. to get it done. I don't have any fault with that. But. All right. Uh, so we're done with this piece? I think so. Um, okay. I think these suggestions were really helpful, by the way. Thank you so much. Okay, hold on. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing that flow again. Um, and we're going on to the next two are very similar. Um, they're emails to boards, um, committees, chairs, etc. Um, okay. Oh, this one is the public. It shouldn't be called that. Um, but it's very similar message and there is no format. Now, this is something, by the way, in the future, we may want to consider changing. Okay. This is the wrong form. Sorry. My recollection is we get very few responses to that. That is so absolutely the experience we've all had. The, the two that I had, the one that was attached to note 3A and the one attached to note 4A, both appeared to be to chairs, not to the public, and they were slightly yeah. different. I'm just going to say just, right now that I per preferred the one that was note 4A over the one that was note 3A. But I think okay, it's I'm got gonna... similar change, challenges to what we just discussed on the staff email. 
in so terms of summaries or not. Pull that up. Okay. I think you know that did not. That is not what I want. Um. <clears throat> Hold on. Sorry about this. And Mandy Jo, I believe this is the one you're looking for. And then this, so two things. This also has that same paragraph uh, about this. And I would assume that probably we want a summary or we, we want to compile it. Question is, can we? I mean, these are emails to the town council. That's true. They're not forms. They're not anything. I'm not sure there is a way to compile per se. The only thing is they're not subject to public records law. Right. So I think your yellow paragraph is fine. That the submissions will be read by every council member and the manager, but their personnel documents and are exempt from public dis disclosure. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. So then the next question is, in this one, I actually did state the goals. Right. And do we want that? I mean, here it does arguably make more sense in this in a way that, but I don't know. Um, again. It's kind of what, what do we want? Oh, we just want to hear from, this is addressed to the public, correct? This is just the public memo? Yes. But this includes town committees, boards, commissions, right? It, this, it literally is the same process. Right. Yeah, I, I, George, I think this one's for the chairs, but then That's you right, just barely modify it for the public, right? right. I, okay, thank you. I'll deal with spacing later. Um, I think just the bold sentence in the first paragraph is what disappears when it's sent to the public. Yes. Right, right. And I guess the question for us is whether this kind of extra text will possibly produce better responses or whether we just again like we did with staff we just want to hear what people are thinking All right mandy joe you have your hand yeah up. so i i was gonna say for the public i think it's helpful to just put out there the goals anyway we might not get stuff directly related to paul on that but we might get I don't like these goals. It, right. There might be other things helpful to the council right. if we put those broad goals out there. Yeah. yeah. And if we take out this paragraph, this sentence, and put those in there, it still may be one page. We might be able to. Although you notice that this one, we also give our direct contact, as we do in the board and chairs boards, chairs, and commissions. I don't think that's totally necessary in terms of direct contact. We could just say mm -hmm. council Amherst MA and not. Right, right. Yeah. I don't yeah. think you want the individual ones listed because you want the public comments and the comments from committee chairs to be 
sent to the uh, to the council as a whole, yeah. not the counselors they know, because otherwise we're not all going to be working from the same place as we do our work. The uh, other thing that I was thinking about is that what you're interested in, apart from committee chairs and committee members, um, is a little bit more specific in that we'd also like to have some sense of whether they provide, uh, whether they're getting adequate support for the work of their committees and, wh and um, whether they think the work of their committee, the goals of their committee are being um, significantly um, considered. Was there some goal specifically on that under community engagement volunteer committees, boards and commissions under goal number five. Yeah. If there was, maybe we, for the committee email, we specifically list that one. Um, yeah. Maximize contribution of town committees. Maybe instead of stating um, all the goals, we say among the town manager's seven goals is this broad one, including C, and then repeat there. Right. So in other words, this whole thing would get be, re be replaced by Uh, it's 5C. Okay. I like that because it really gets at what we need to know from them. Exactly. Exactly. Although, for example, you know, ECAC may want to comment on the climate action goals, et cetera. Right. Right. So I need to monkey with this so that it basically says, you know, there's seven broad goals, but specific to committees is this one. And in your response, you may want to speak to that. So that's for committee chairs. Right. And you could also, if you want, say, encourage committee members to look at the seven broad goals because some of them may specifically relate to the committee they are on and they may wish to comment on that too, something like that. Yeah, because finance, the non-voting residents might want to comment. JCPC members might want to comment on, you know, the capital improvement plan or you know, there, there just might be long-term planning. There might be committee members that want to comment on specific goals, but mm -hmm. directing them to that instead of listing them. Okay. Go down a little bit lower in the goals, just so I can see. Is... <laughs> Sorry, hold on. I have so many documents here. It's, the, <laughs> it's I wanted to see what uh, the last two are again. You know, frankly, I would hope that people from the chamber and the bid would comment specifically on six. I think the public letter, which we don't have in front of us, should list all seven goals. Yeah, I agree. Okay. All right, let me just go back up here and on this. Thank you. 
I'll just write myself a note. Public. Seven bowls. That are encouraged to look at broad goals, particularly as they relate to their committee and replace with, <laughs> with whatever, with, oh, C, 5C, 5. Yeah. Was that a committee that feels that the uh, goals don't adequately address what their committee is about and so that they're also critical of the goals themselves as written? Are you saying that's a problem? Andy? Yeah, um, I was thinking of two examples. Um, is there anything in the goals that speaks to the purposes of the Public Shade Tree Committee? Is there anything in the goals that speaks to the purposes of the LSSE Commission? Uh, the only thing that would be on the Shade Committee, I would imagine, would be uh, under the environmental goal, which is two. And that doesn't have anything that says, quote, shade tree. And you said LSSE, the only place that that would be um, a possibility would be under five. And it doesn't recommend, it doesn't necessarily speak to um, um, LSSE. But, you know, then they tell us that it doesn't have that. And that gives us information that should help us shape next year's goals. Yeah, no, I was thinking about the LSSC Commission because uh, having been a former liaison to that and having thought a lot about the issues, uh, the question ultimately for the commission is, is the town manager uh, creating an atmosphere to support the work of the commission and to uh, make sure that the goals of the commission are translated into the activities of the town. Uh, and is that, in, is that part of what we're looking for or not? You know, I think, Andy, those are great questions for next year because the goals we have now are the goals we have. Right. Uh, I also, you know, it to me, this just raises the much bigger question about revision of this whole process. No, I think it is a big problem, but uh, as you go to committee chairs and ask them to send it to all members of committees, what do we expect to get and um, why are we asking that particular group? Right. right. So if given the time frame, is there anything else on this? And I'm going to mark this revised note three and four. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, let me just also then quickly go back to the calendar. Uh, let me find it. As you start that, I'm going to just say a couple of things. One is that uh, I think that the calendar right now is pretty problematic as to whether we can, it's really reasonable to achieve uh, what we want to achieve according to that calendar. And we need, and I don't think we're gonna get that solved in the next five minutes. Um, right. The other comment I just generally had 
is that uh, one of the things that you've heard me complain about before, and uh, you know, Alyssa's made reference to it, is I think that the whole council meeting in which we deal with the uh, reading of everybody else's comments and the compilation in a public meeting and have a useful discussion in, the, in, in that format, I have always had problems with and continue to have problems with. What could we, so let, let me stick to one question I had right up front. Should we give people till July 17th? Give who? Give um, <coughs> staff, the public, and committees. When are our evaluations due? Our evaluations are not due until... Um, the 4th. The 4th, right. If we give them more time, we have less time to read and write ours. Mm. Right. Yeah, I think that's, that's why I think that the whole calendar is with the I mean, the 10th gives us three weeks to complete ours. Now, people may say that's too much or plenty. Two weeks would be fine. I don't know. But the 10th is when they're in. We don't get them potentially till the next week. Mm -hmm. Right. I mean, we could give them till Monday the 13th you know, splitting the difference. I'm, I can go either way. I need to get these things out by either the end of, by tomorrow, Thursday. Putting them out on Friday does no, nobody any good. You know, and if I get them out on Monday, that gives people two weeks. Mm -hmm. With a holiday in there. With a holiday. So I, you know, I could make this the 13th. That means counselors get theirs by the 14th or 15th. And um, remember, they're getting committee chair and um, uh, the others directly. The only one that they're getting as a compilation of is the staff. Thoughts? Sounds like we don't have a lot of other things that are going on during that same time period. I have that no idea. Take a lot of focus of uh, council attention, uh, which gets back to my general question as to whether <clears throat> we're reasonable in this timeline at all. Andy, just let me point out that I agree with you. Part of me says, and, and I also want to point out that this is not a contract renewal year for Paul. Um, his contract already goes out two years past this August, or is it three years? Three years. Um, and... Um, I probably should not discuss compensation, but um, in my preliminary conversations with Paul, he is not only not expecting, I think he would prefer not to receive any addition. So it's not like we're under that pressure. The only other pressure is to clear it off of our calendar so that it's done and we can get on with our work in September. There's also the pressure of goals. Waiting till January to approve the goals is unacceptable. The, the year starts in July. We're already waiting till September to pr pr approve them, which is already two months into the fiscal year. Right. Um, so I, I, don't, I don't want, personally, I don't want to push that goal mm -hmm. approval any later than early September. Mm -hmm. I agree. 
So this is, uh, I mean, I, at this point, this is a calendar that we put out and people have commented on twice. Um, this is the session, Andy, that you're talking. No. Um, the, the August 17th session. Yeah, it's the August. This is the session you're talking about. And I am, I would be so open to any other suggestion. I, the thing that always has befuddled me is why these aren't confidential documents until we release them, given that they're dealing with personnel. Well, I think I asked Alyssa why we couldn't get them early last time because they get released and the other people get to re read them too. Scott gets to read them at the same time we do. They're released to the public at the same time. And, and the response was because if we do it at the meeting, we first discuss it, we can control the narrative, I think is what it is. Otherwise, the newspaper article's out there before we've even had our meeting. Right. That's exactly her argument. But my but, Andy makes the argument that, well, how do we even control the narrative when we're just, we haven't even, even if that's the happening, because we haven't even had time to digest any of it. Right. And we do not release a public document until... No, the, the 17th is when it's released publicly. All no. of our evaluations are released publicly on the 17th. We don't have a press release about the whole thing until September 14th. Yeah, because it's not a final evaluation, but in the meantime, Mersbach will have read the um, compilation and have read all of the individuals um, and will make whatever story that he wants out of it. And we now have all of these additional journalists out there in various fashions who are doing the same thing and posting to wherever. Right. But so we, back to my question, why are they public until we release them? They're personnel documents. And yet the only thing that we have that is not done in public is the discussion of what we want to do about his contract. I think you're getting into a KP law kind of question uh, because Alyssa has always assumed that they are public documents and they're public documents as soon as they're released in a public meeting for us to read. So I think Alyssa's point was the staff evaluations are not public, but our evaluations are public as soon as we start discussing that because I think we're elected officials or something. I don't know the reasoning, but that with yeah. Andy would be a KP law discussion. Ours are, and, and certainly our summary letter in draft form is most definitely public upon release and discussion. But I think the thing that people would really appreciate is being able to get all 17 or 13, I'm sorry, of the individual counselor documents before that night where we then sit in front of a blank TV screen. So we can do that if we release them to the public at the same time, a week in advance if we wanted to. But we can't, you're saying, even though they're personnel documents, so, so the problem is we're all elected officials subject to open meeting law and they contain our deliberations and opinions on the evaluation of which we will be voting on. And that is why it's probably a public record. And so we cannot release all of them to each other except either in an open meeting or simultaneously to the public on the website. Okay. So we could do it four days in advance on Friday, the 6th, the 14th at 5 p.m., the typical dump time of stuff. Um, uh, 
public simultaneous with the public so the council has the weekend to read them it's just it has to be posted online at the exact same time and at which point scott can publish something in the saturday newspaper um the other you know digital press can do whatever they want and individuals can start writing to us yep yeah i have made the argument to Alyssa the select board days um and probably made it since and she just isn't there is that i would at least um not start the public meeting when you release the documents but to release the documents say at four o'clock and start the public meeting at seven o'clock and just swallow those three hours and uh if somebody's going to make a newspaper story during those three hours, it doesn't matter if we're sitting there in the room silently reading them or if they're just um, doing it, everybody's doing it at their home. But at least that three hour window uh, where we're not in public meeting and we're not sitting there in that awkward stance uh, of being in front of each other, I think is very, um, would make a lot of difference. Well, I think the other question is with Zoom, because we are still going to be on Zoom at that point, is what are they going to show during? <laughs> I mean, my video is going to be turned off. My mute's going to be on. My <laughs> yeah, there's anything to show, and there was never anything to show, even if it, let's pretend for the moment that we're not doing it by Zoom. It's still, you have a picture of a blank uh, of a room where a bunch of people are reading. I know. But one year that I finally convinced Alyssa that we can put something on the screen explaining what's happening and uh, telling people that the evaluations that are being read are available. But uh, to have that, uh, have it be in a public meeting where it's being shown was really kind of ridiculous that um, if they were released and we read them for three hours beforehand and then we meet it would still satisfy the same purpose mm. could we release them on a sunday we can release them whenever we want if we want more time than three hours or we release them at two o'clock day of or or whatever i mean i like andy's idea um of you, you don't call the meeting for 5 30 you call the meeting for seven say maybe not even 6 30. it depends upon your level of concern uh, to Alyssa's point that if you release it on sunday it invites mersbach to put something together for the monday paper so I guess my concern is he's going to do that with the individual valuations, whether or not we have a meeting, because there's the individual valuations. What reporters going to ignore them and go with just what's said in the public meeting? Right. By the way, I don't think he did anything until we did the final evaluation. Um, you're deliberating in a public meeting and uh, you have to go back to the open meeting law and whether there's any provision in the open meeting law that allows you to do an executive session for the purpose of doing an evaluation of the town manager. I think that Alyssa, uh, who's spent a lot of time studying the open meeting law, has concluded the answer to that is no. Okay. Let, me, let me just do this. Let me check with Alyssa. And if I can see any reason um, to go to go back to KP law, I'll ask Paul that I go ahead. Open, before you talk to Alyssa, read the open meeting law section on executive session and decide whether you have an argument in there that it is can be done in executive session, because that's the debate you're going to have with Alyssa. Okay, got it. And that's a valid question. That's where the crux of it is. Right. Okay. Uh, let me just go back on this timeline and just call attention to um, note seven. And that means that on August 12th, we should be having a GOL meeting. 
and it should mm -hmm. be goals. Wouldn't we need them before that, though? That's uh, the town council getting the goals from us. We have to meet well um, before that to discuss the goals and come up yeah. with a draft. Okay, so George, looking at the GOL schedule, right? When do you want that goals meeting? We have a GOL meeting scheduled for August 5th and yep. June, July 15th. What do we see on the July 15th schedule? Yep. This is not, I'm, this is not a 15 minute discussion. No, it isn't. We I need it by the 12th, yeah. My guess is we should start on the 7th, on the 15th. And we have the 5th as well, we need it. And then finish up on the 5th. And if we have to do a special meeting, we still have time. Yeah, and I think the major point. Huh? The major point we're raising though is, is that we do not, um, believe that we need to wait until after people have seen, have gone through the evaluation process and see how the evaluation works out for what he's done in the past year to start developing the goals for the next year. That's that, that was what the, uh, that's what the prior discussion had always been is that we should have the goals for the next year evolve out of the evaluation itself. And we're suggesting that that's no longer necessary if it ever was necessary. Well, we can give it to the town council in draft form. We give them the second set on 31st. And, my, and we don't vote them until September 14th. So the goals are evolving as we're doing the evaluation. And I think that's just what we say. Yeah. Okay. Closing. But I think, you know, and, and I'll just tell you right now, for the 15th, I would just, July 15th, GOL meeting, I just, yep. here's last year's goals. What do you want to change? Mm hmm All Right. Okay. Okay. And I didn't get the sense from the council other than they think I'm biased. Um, well, one council thinks I'm biased. Um, <laughs> that they expect GOL to read the document in advance of giving it to the whole council. Is there anybody else who sees that differently? If you do, it means an open meeting. I think that was the point for not referring that summary evaluation letter to GOL was because then it's already out there two weeks before the council meeting. Right. Um, right. And so are the summaries, frankly, at that point. That means the summaries and the letter are released for a GOL meeting, not for a council meeting. Yep. Yeah. Okay. That's staying the way it has in the past. Um, yes, too. I am not at this point suggesting that any of you help me. That doesn't take away my right later to individually ask. Mm hmm I would appreciate it if you need help that you ask us and not to try to do it solo. I thank you for that statement. I, that's all I can say, Pat. <laughs> if we get into it, then it's a committee. Um, okay, other comments on the schedule? 
Okay, then we're basically get staying to the schedule as um, we have it. And the only thing I'm going to be checking on is the um, when we when we want to post the things and checking on open meeting law and talking to Alyssa, probably we should assume that we might start the meeting earlier so people have more time to read to the TV. Um, and then the other thing is we've now agreed that we'll have a GOL meeting on July 15th. We already have agreed to have a GOL meeting on July 15th, and it will include our first discussion of the goals. Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Anything? Well, let me make sure I understood that point you made about, so are you proposing that they be made available before the um, meeting goes public? So uh, they become if I can figure out how to do that in a way that. So you can, it's can. the same as calling the meeting. It's just, it has to be published simultaneously to the public. Right. So you can't like send the council the summary on Saturday morning and then post it on, and the counselor evaluations on Saturday morning and have Athena post it on Monday morning. Mm -hmm. It needs posted at the same time. In other words, you should post it before you actually send it to the counselors on mm -hmm. the web. But then it could be done on Monday at, you know, 3 p.m. or something. And let me also say that, as you may recall, when we were in the town room last year, we actually had physical documents. Uh, Andy, you're aware of this from the finance committee. Some people would like us to have physical documents delivered to them versus printing them off. Are we willing to do that or offer that? That means 13 police cars arrive simultaneously at our homes. Well, no, you just put it online at like two or three and whoever asks for a physical copy sometime after two o'clock or three o'clock or whatever time you pick gets delivered a physical copy. Yeah, I don't think we necessarily encourage it, but if there's somebody who feels that for disability reasons or whatever, that they can't read it without having a physical copy. Or they can't them, print it at home because they don't have... You don't have time to print it at home at that point. I'm sorry? <laughs> You'd spend your whole three hours printing instead of reading. Right. Where would you have your hand raised? I'm just trying to, uh, so on the 17th, when we finally do meet, we're still going to sit there and read, that even though the documents have been available to us. I, if, if we have this scenario, if I understand it, we'll have had the opportunity to read everything before the meeting. We're still going to sit. What I'm trying to do is figure out what level of risk we're willing to take about outside influence and interference. Right. Uh, during the meeting and whether we if we release documents publicly into the council at, on the sat Sunday before right. two o'clock on the Monday before right. or four o'clock because we all decide we need three hours to read. Right. I mean what you're really getting to is the question also as to whether you're going to have public comment in this process at all. And uh, I would say that we need to give some thought to whether this should be a special meeting in which there is no public comment because we're dealing with the evaluation. And uh, if you're not going to do public comment, then there's not an opportunity for somebody who's um, read them even at the three hour window to make public comment and um, try and sway the discussion. Make, right. make the discussion I mean, I wouldn't stop public comment. We're soliciting public comment mm -hmm. on the evaluation. Why would mm -hmm. we then suddenly right. say, oh, but you can't comment on the summary letter? That doesn't make sense to me. I'm sorry. It, the note that I have, which comes over from last year, is after the town council has their discussion on the 17th, we open it up for public comment. I'd have to go back and look at the agenda from then to see if we, that's the way we did it, but I think we did. It seems to make sense. 
Yeah, I think it's a matter of course. I just don't recall that we ever had it. And by that time, it's usually 10 o'clock and everybody else is going to sleep. <laughs> and some counselors. <laughs> Okay. Okay. We don't do this anymore. Um, any other comments? No. All right, George. What do you want, if anything, in the GOL report that would be useful to the council about what we're doing today? That we reviewed these various documents. Yes. Made changes and right. Summarize those and okay. just a description of broadly of what we've been doing and that there's no particular message or anything they really need to know specifically. It's just that we, we're working on it. We changed, we made drastic changes to the town manager council form. We did not change the staff form. You know, you can, you and I can look at what you write. I do think that if we get a decision that we don't have to give individual evaluations um, of some from staff to the town manager, we should point that out. Um, okay. You know, that we're trying to encourage more uh, staff participation by providing both electronic and written options. Um, okay. Made the decision not to use a third party. Okay. Um, well, I will reach out to you before I, and I'll show you this section. And if yeah. you, uh, work it if there needs to be okay and you know you can send it to the whole group for that matter i don't i'm fine anything else this has been very helpful i i actually um i'm glad it's been referred to a committee finally and it's been i think the suggestions particularly made on the council form are excellent i really do i think they're really good ones. Anything else? If Next not, time we meet, we're doing interviews yep. a week. Yep. And I don't know if people have any concerns or questions about that. Um, I've heard from everybody, um, the four interviewers, the four people we're going to interview. Um, and I will describe the process to them. But what I'm envisioning is that at 1035, the first interview will begin. They're uh, set at 20 minute intervals. And I hope the interviews will be about 15 minutes. So there'll be a little bit of time. Possible people could show up early um, and stay through the entire meeting. Um, it's a public meeting, so that's a possibility. But at the moment, I'm envisioning everyone in this format. They're all panelists, um, but that they would show up at their specific time. But I can't control that. And if they do show up early, I'm going to ask them to be muted and to have their video off. And if they're not, and we'll have to stop and do that. Uh, so that's the, just to be aware of the process a little bit um, cumbersome. I'm working with Athena on this, but uh, everyone, the four interviewers are on board. They've all agreed. Um, they understand that it's one after the other and I'll describe the process to them. Do you have any questions about that process um, as committee members, how it's gonna go? So it would be like this and we'll say Angela is the person they interviewed, um, but there might also, there might be present one or two others, um, but they would be muted and they would not have their video on. Hopefully they would show up a few minutes before the next, right before their interview, but that means they're gonna show up on the screen and hopefully they'll be muted and their video won't be on. So it could be a little awkward, but I don't know any other way to do it. Um, Yes, I don't understand why they can't be attendees and moved into allowed into the room for oh, their that, interview. Yeah, no, it, 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 the problem is that then they get there's been some problems with that um, where um, they get there's a there's a time delay or they get they have to leave the meeting and then come back. Um, I will try again with Athena, but it seemed the simplest was to have them as panelists. But Andy, I, I would I'm, I agree if if they were attendees. And we just move them in, and then they're, when they're done, we move them out. Um, so I, it, I will try again with her, but I, the initial communication between myself and Athena was it seemed simpler. And she's also, I think, worried about Zoom bombing and so on. If they're panelists, they get unique 
invitations, right? Mm -hmm. So, and she was worried about security. The odds of this are probably really remote, to say the least. On the other mm -hmm. hand, it seemed more secure to have everybody have a unique Zoom invite, but that means they're panelists. So I'm open to suggestions here. Maybe people say, don't worry about the Zoom bombing stuff. We'd rather they be attendees, and then we just bring them in, and then we take them out. Um, the issue about having them be attendees is, okay, so here's the issue. If they're attendees and they have installed Zoom on their computer, then they can be more easily moved in and out. Right. But if they haven't, the likelihood of them being disconnected when they're moved in right. as panelists is very strong. And that's what happened the whenever that was that we were doing right. Right. The, the issue. Were, they had to, right. so really... What we're actually asking people to do who want to participate in meetings by Zoom is make sure they've installed Zoom on their computer. They don't have to buy it, they just do the basic Zoom. And that evidently allows for a smoother entrance and exit. One of the possibilities, now you can't do that with phone. Phone is phone. Right. And one of the uh, people who is applying has only ever joined meetings by phone. Right. That's right. Um, right. And the, um, but we can ask Angela or someone else that Angela might ask to go over with each panelist installing Zoom. Just thinking about the panelists, my guess is they all have Zoom. I think one uh, is someone who uses only phone. That's right. I right. think the other three, I, I don't know, but I'm guessing they probably could do it. Um, anyway, this is the situation. Um, I certainly will continue to work with Athena, and I hear the thought that if everyone has Zoom, that makes life easier for everybody. Um, uh, I mean, this was the upshot of that question, Mandy Joe. I think was you were on it. The, the meeting we had with Athena and um, uh, Serge. Yeah. So I mean, maybe George. If you email the three or all four and ask them if they have installed the Zoom right. app on their computer and have a sort of free account, I guess is what it would be. And if you can confirm that they do, then we still give them the panelist link because that's more secure. But when they come in as a panelist, we can demote them to attendee if they come in early and then promote them again very smoothly. Right. Um, and, and the reason giving them a panelist link is more secure is you can put your name in, you can put any name you want in as an attendee to yeah. show. And so there's no guarantee that, you know, if we're intending to interview Amy, I haven't even looked at the SOIs yet, so I have no idea whether there's, I'm just picking the name out of a hat. Mm -hmm. You know, if we, if we want to aim, interview an Amy, um, that someone else knows because we have a list on our, agenda that will show the name someone else knows there's an amy interview comes in because they want to zoom bomb and lists amy as their name we don't know whether it's the amy we actually want to interview or someone pretending to be amy whereas if we give them that panelist link we right. know it's the amy we want to interview and, and they actually have already gotten their links now we can yeah. change that but uh if and i had already arranged that they all have a panelist link but I hear you that I should make, try to see if I can get conf confirmation that they have Zoom. Athena also said she would be present during the meeting. I, so, I was just going to ask because I don't, Angela, I don't think you can bring people in and out of given your computer capabilities, right? So I can switch people from attendees to panelists. That's not a problem as a co-host, and I'm I'm happy to do that. But I think having Athena on the call is not a bad idea. Okay. So she's, volunteered, she's volunteered for that particular meeting uh, to be present. Um, so hopefully that's what it will be, that we will have the ability to uh, put people, you know, move them and then bring them in. And if they choose to stay, 
Um, that's up to them. If they want to stay and listen, that's it's a public meeting. Um, but there is one of the candidates that I believe does have the phone issue. And right. I will do, I'll talk with Athena and we'll deal with that and see what we can do. Um, right. But anyway, 1035, 1055, right? That's the plan. Um, and each one of you gets a question. Try to move it along quickly. We want to give them a moment to ask a question if they have any. Um, and I think as chair, I'm going to try and pretty much just run that part of it. And unless there's really something glaring that I see, I'm probably not going to ask any questions. So, um, and we'll, we'll rotate through. So I'll start with one of you and the next time if I have my brains, I'll move to the next. But everyone will get a chance. Everyone gets a follow-up if they wish. And um, we'll hopefully can do it in 15 minutes. Yeah. And that one person you're talking that one person you're talking the one person you're talking about, the problem is, is that that individual does not have a computer right. that has a camera on it, and therefore it's um, not possible to really participate in Zoom meetings other than by phone. And uh, I think that uh, if we're not going to discriminate against an applicant because they don't have the computer capability with a camera, um, so be it, um, but I don't, I don't feel comfortable that we in any way disadvantage that person for that reason as somebody we would consider. Right. What, are you suggesting that then video be off for everybody? No, we just have to recognize that and make sure. Oh yeah, no, right. No. I think we can do that. I hope and, we can. Uh, I mean, does not disadvantage that particular right. applicant. I mean, I did tell them that the interviews are optional because they are. Um, everyone has expressed a desire to do it, but it's possible that one of them could have said, you know, I really can't be bothered or I just, you know, I, it doesn't work or whatever. Right. And we agreed that we would try not to, we would try not to use that against them. Um, we may want to revisit the process at some future okay. date, but so we're going to have to use our, you know, collective good judgment. Okay. All right. Done. I leave that to the George? chair. I'm Seven. done. Yeah. You you adjourning? Uh, <laughs> I was going to stick around for a while. I, I I'm so lonely. Uh, I just I'm so really it's therapy. We're just wondering whether we can hit the leave button. <laughs> <laughs> You and can hit the leave button anytime, Andy. <laughs> yeah, so I think I'm ready to call this wonderful meeting to uh, to adjourn it and look forward to seeing you all in a week uh, for the interviews, if not sooner. Well, actually, we'll see, I'll see you sooner, obviously, but uh, anyway. Yeah, Lynn and I just participated in an outdoor meeting at Mill River. Maybe we could have a meeting out where we were seated at, you know, there were enough picnic tables we could each be at one. Right. We really see each other. It was actually yeah. nice. Yeah. That Andrew, I'll see what I can do. All right. <laughs> Bye. Oh, I'm, leaving. I'm leaving. Take Bye. care. You may all go. If I can figure out how to leave, I will.